Look at that. It's time for the Jesse T Show, live from Los Angeles, Compton, California. Yeah, man, I am in Compton, California. Compton, the city of Compton, NWA, Easy e Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Compton, California, Ice Cube, Ice T, all those times way back when, when I was at 1580 K-Day, coming down here to Compton was always like, what color t-shirt do I wear? What color sweatshirt do I wear? Am I red? Am I blue? Am I on the right street? Oh no, but we were at K-Day, so we were good with everybody and everywhere. The Brown Beauty is back on duty. It's Jesse T, and we're talking real estate today in the city of Compton, guys. Uh, you've been hearing me talk about this for some time because Compton has changed since the 1980s and early 1990s when I was at K-Day on there and everywhere from the community to the world, the Brown Beauty on duty, Jesse T. Uh, man, it was uh, basically uh, an area where lots of wonderful African-American families live. But in the last 40 years, 35 to 40 years, Compton has completely changed. Blew my doors off when I came down there for a specific reason about uh, six months ago, uh, looking for a house for uh, a gentleman that we're going to bring on here in a second because he's got a magnificent story to tell on how he is becoming a millionaire in less than two years. I'm not BSing you here. He followed the Jesse T way of buying real estate. I've been doing this for 40 years, but let me get back to the original thought here. Compton has become basically a city that's in great flux and change. New schools, new policing, new fire, new streets, new, new shopping centers. Um, it's really the parks are looking great. The streets are looking great. Street cleaning, all this stuff. It's really changed. And the primary ethnic group that has moved into Compton, like in Glendale, it's Armenian. In some parts of Los Angeles, it's Korean, right? Primary, the, the primary group that's moved into Compton here in the last 35 years are people of, of the Hispanic background, the Latino ethnicity, Hispanic Americans. People have come to this country, immigrated to this country, or lived here before, but found that Compton's prices were just a little bit lower, and they have been swooping down here for about eight to nine years, transitioning Compton from what was basically an African-American stronghold for decades uh, has turned into a mixed kind of American concept uh, in the new order today, where you have a lot of young, strong, positive Hispanic and Latino families, hardworking people coming here, and a lot of the African-American folks just have gotten old, passed away, moved on, living with kids who have moved someplace else, didn't come back to Compton. So anyhow, Compton has changed, and I, I suggest look at Compton as an alternative way to buy. So anyway, I'm going to bring on my buddy here. I'm going to bring on Angel. What's happening, Angel? Well, it's great. Uh, moving forward again, like always, with Jesse. Uh, um, uh, hanging, be hanging with Jesse T. Just, it just changed my life. Changed my life. Um, two years, uh, again, two years ago, I was... Pretty much, I was a homeless, you know. I'm yeah, you were happy. living, you were living in an RV. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, here and there, you know. And uh, then I met Jesse, you know, and I'm talking about my dreams, and he believed on me. That's right, brother. You know, he believed on me, and two years later, you know, well, I'm very close to 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 become, you know, my I'm very close to get my first figure in, in real estate, you know, one million dollars for you. A know. millionaire. This this young man right here, listen, he's be, he's very humble, but I'm going to talk about this in a little bit of a different way. But Angel, I met Angel through some political stuff. I was running for politics, and I was running for an office here in the city of Los Angeles. And then uh, and I met him. We talked about that, but I actually met him on the freeway. That's right. I met you on the freeway. I ran out of gas in the Great White Hope. Yes, remember the car from a couple, couple name brands ago, the Great White Hope? I ran out of gas. Uh, Jesse Andrew and I were stuck on the freeway, and he swooped down by. And he saw us there, and I got the car started, and he followed us to the gas station, and he saw that I was in real estate, and we started talking a little bit about real estate, and he kind of said, hey, I wanted to do this, and I've been trying to buy something for four, five, six years. That's right. And, 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 and he said, all these agents and brokers and banks that I go to, they just give me a bunch of crap, and they don't tell me the truth, and they, they I don't, you know, I'm trying. I got a good job. I'm working hard. You know, I, I, I want to buy a house to live in. So I said, okay. So we got in contact a, a couple of days later, and uh, that's when it started. And I laid out this plan for him. 
And this plan was this vision that I'm going to tell you about right now. Angel's a hard-working man, okay? First off, you got to have a job and you got to be working. You just can't be homeless bum. You can be a homeless person, but as long as you have a good job, you got something going on. You got to have at least fair credit. It doesn't have to be 800 or 900. It can be 580, 620, 650 FICO score. And you have to show that you can save a little bit of money. You don't have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. Just a few thousand to show that you can save a little bit of money. Now with that, I can find you a house. First off, I'm going to find you a loan. And that's the first thing we talked about was loan financing. And we had, we had a lot of sessions about that. And she said, okay, let's go get myself pre-qualified. I got you pre-approved. Remember, you were approved for a certain amount of money. And we, we went looking and we couldn't find anything because the prices were a little too high in the areas you wanted at time. Remember? Right. That's right. And so I said to you, I said, you know, we got to kind of look in a little wider area. And I made some suggestions out there in the Antelope Valley to you. And you thought about it and you said, yeah, let's go look out there. And, uh, and so we went out there and I happened to have a property that I was selling. And what a house that was on J3. Now, we won't give them the front address, but we'll say J3. What a house. I mean, it's, it's just the location, the house. I mean, it's, you know, uh, I cannot go wrong, you know. A brand new house, you know, two storage, two storage house, you know. Uh, I'm close to, uh, ne ne next to me, there is a, a shopping center. So I, I just can go and walk and uh, get my grocery, uh, my bank around the corner, gas around the corner. Auto, auto shop, two auto shops right there? Uh, yeah, auto zone. I mean, you know, so it's just the location, uh, I mean, you know, just great. Uh, the, the house is just beautiful. I mean, it's brand new house, front yard, back yard, two storage. Uh, I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah, it was built in beautiful. the 90s, so it was basically new. It was pretty good shape, too. I remember we had to have a, a kind of a half of the new kitchen put in. Remember, we had that old owner had to put in a, a new kitchen because they found some mold in the house. Yeah, that's right. And and so they had to rip out some of the kitchen. So you got basically a new kitchen, but the tenant in there, you inherited a, a tenant. That's right. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, uh, hanging with Jesse T. I mean, you know, this is can happen. You know, I mean, you know. Um, Basically, my tenants have been paying for my mortgage, you know. That's the truth, you know. I mean, you, know. you have a positive cash flow position going on there because your mortgage, we got him a great loan, his first loan ever, and you were surprised that you could even get a loan. And when, we, when I said, man, you're approved, you were like, what do you well, mean I'm approved? Are you okay? Uh, <laughs> oh, like, really? Really? Man, I've been wasting four years, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, what I went through with some other agents, you know, it was just like a nightmare. And the, the, it was a point, you know, what I, what, what I was thinking, you know, maybe I'm not going to get a house in, in L.A. Yeah. Yeah, that was true. I was, uh, go through that, you know, for four years, seeing, you know, this agent, that agent, this real estate guy. I was thinking myself, I'm not getting a, I'm not getting a house in L.A., in Los Angeles. Yeah, you probably had to go to Nevada or Las Vegas Somewhere. Or, or Arizona or something. Somewhere, you know. Yeah. Surprise. I met Jesse. I mean, it's, I got a feeling, you know, when I saw him, you know, he's different. <laughs> yeah. when I saw Wait a him, minute. Jesse T is different? Wait. Uh, he's different, you know. I'm going to look to him, you know, yeah, he's different. <laughs> I was right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm right. That's the nice way of putting yeah. it, man. I am, I am a little bit different, that's for sure. Some people might say something else. But I've been doing real estate for 40 years. I've been a real estate broker and a loan specialist for 30 years and notary for over 10. So, I mean, there's not something that I haven't done yet and haven't seen and haven't worked, had to work a solution through. And, uh, and so, you know, I had three real estate offices for a long time. And, you know, I, I'm on my own. I went on my own again after I sold out to my partner. But uh, uh, it, when you do that many transactions and you meet that many people, uh, and you see this many things that you have to solve, it just adds a breadth of experience to you that a lot of agents don't have. Not to say that they won't get it, but you know, I've been doing this so long that when I see somebody like Angel and I hear his story and I, we pulled a credit report and I said, man, why don't you have a house yet? That was, I said to you, why, what, what is wrong with these? And within, I think within about 30 to 45 days, I called you up and you said, well, tell me about the house. I said, close escrow, man. And you got $300 cash flow in your pocket. That's right. 
That's right. And he pays on time. Dell's a good guy. He pays pretty much on time all the time. That's you know? Right. That's right. And he got a good tenant. And, um, and, and we had to do some interesting creative things to get the loan. But I never do anything that puts my clients or myself or anybody in jeopardy. But we had to stretch the rubber band as far as it could be stretched. And we did, and you got your first house. And that was what? Almost two years ago, right? Uh, that was on May, May uh, 16, 2016, by the way. Yeah, I, my first house, I remember that day, you know, that Jesse called me. Hey, you got a house? I was like, really? <laughs> You're not joking, Jesse, all right? <laughs> no, 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 man, you got a house. I got a house? Yeah, it's After yours. After three, four, five yeah. years, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, I, my first house, yeah. Uh, and this is the May mind 16th, blower. Yes. Because he bought that house, and I'm going to... I'm going to tell him what you bought it for. I won't tell him you know, anything too personal. But you bought that house for a hundred, I think it was 175,000, yeah. right? About 175,000. That house today, my friends, today, right now, as we sit here in Compton, California, that house today with the same tenant who we up the rent, who you, you're by law, you can raise the rent every year. So Angel's making a little more positive cash flow now. Um, like. Four hundred dollars a month, three to four hundred dollars a month. That same house today is pushing four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Whoa, yeah, four hundred thousand dollars, and he bought it for one seventy-five. That's you know when uh, you hang around with the SCT, and this is what happened, you know. Two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars richer, baby. That's right. That's he ain't right. living in a motorhome anymore. But then he says, man, I like this. I like this. I want to buy another one. And I said, wait a minute. Wait, slow down. Just get used to this one a little bit. So six months go by. And I figure, I said, six months. We need to put six months in there. So six, nine months go by. And I said, look, it. this is what's going to happen, Angel. In the next five years, from the time you bought this house, you're going to be worth multi-million dollars in real estate. I'm going to give you a plan now that if you follow this plan, you will be worth multi-million dollars, not just a million dollars, multi-million dollars. Angel wasn't born in America. Angel is a legal immigrant who is an American citizen, came from Mexico. His family's from Mexico. Angel is the American story. He came here, got his green card, worked hard, established himself in his profession, and that's body shop, mechanics, that kind of stuff. Worked hard, kept his nose clean, saved his money, kept his credit good, worked hard, bought a house, and now he is the American story because I laid it out for him. I said five years, five to seven years, my friend, you're going to be worth multi-million dollars in real estate. Just follow my plan. We're gonna buy another one at the end of that year. So the end of the first year, we, uh, I looked at it and I said, okay, where do you wanna go? He goes, man, I gotta be down in the city somewhere. If this is a little too far for me. My job, my job is down in the city. I gotta be down there. So I said, uh, okay. So we both started looking and he came up with this idea. He said, how about Compton? And I said, great idea. I came down there, I'd been in Compton in a while. And uh, I was shocked because it completely has changed. It, it, it's unbelievable. So we started looking around and looking around and looking around. And what did you see? About 90 houses? Around. Around. Easy. easy. Easily 90. Easy, easy. I was pumping them stuff. He was looking online. He was going driving by, pumping them real estate, pumping them. Lit. Every, every, every three days you were getting a new list, new list, new list. Because he was down there. He works down in this general area. And so he was down there. So he was able to go look and drive around. I'm a little farther away in Burbank. So, so he came across this one property. I don't know who found this property we're standing in front of. I don't know if it was you or me. I don't know who it was. No, no, this is what it was. It was a property down the street on the other corner that we went to see. Remember the one on the corner? Yes. Or there was another one in the middle of the street. Maybe, and, and, and maybe it was you that found this property. It doesn't matter. So he found this property, it was for sale, but there was no sign out front. No sign. And nobody knew about it. That's right. 
Nobody knew. And the reason why we were able to find that, because we put the work in. We put the work in going house after house after house after house on the goal of getting a second house within a year and a half. So the hardest thing about this house that we're standing in front of that he owns, the hardest thing about this house was the financing. And the reason why the financing was difficult because he owned another house. And we had to be 88 miles away from the other house in order to get an FHA loan on this property. Okay, 88 miles was the key. So, but we really like this house. You really like this house. So this house isn't quite 88 miles. It's like 82 miles. So we worked a, a, a way to refinance him out of the other house to reduce the, the payment. Refinance, you didn't take any money out of there. You left it there, but we got the payment down, which created more positive cash flow, which added to your ability to qualify in the loan for this house. And then you put a down payment, you worked hard and saved, sold off a couple of cars, because he's a mechanic, and he, and he deals in you know, uh, fixing cars up and sells them, does what he does, sold off a couple of cars, and then found this house, and we had to kind of stretch the rubber band a little bit, right? I had to do some things to make this work, and then one day, I walk into him and I say, you just bought a house, second house. Yeah. In 18 months. That's right, you know. I, I mean, it's, uh, sometimes, I, sometimes I don't believe it, you know. I mean, it's 18 months. I mean, it's, how many people do you know that buy two houses in 18 months? Real, I mean, you know. I mean, these are nine houses. I'm talking about the houses. My house, this is, this is like a, it's a private house. I have my private, it's a private house uh, right here on uh, 122. Yep. Uh, beautiful corner house, backyard. Of, um, I mean, it's, I have my park next to me. Uh, what I gonna do my running? Uh, I yep. mean, it's, it's just beautiful, you know. This is I'm, I'm a private guy. This is a private house. It's perfect for his business. He can run his business out of here on the back portion of the land. His mechanic and body shop business, um, and his rehab car rehab business and custom car business here. Plus, he has a house here, and uh, and here's the beauty of it. This is a mind blower. Since nobody really knew about it, and no one could see past. It was, it was like a diamond in the rough because it was, it, it was an original owner that owned this house and going back to the 1950s and it was wore out. But it wasn't really wore out. 